Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, we're going to be taking a look at some parallel lines and transversals, okay? Um, so to start off with, I know it's kind of a little bit of the boring stuff, but it kind of gets you to what you need for the back. Um, so we're going to go over a few postulates and theorems explaining what all of this means. So um, there are four big types of special angles formed by transversals, okay? Discussed in the other day. Well, we're going to talk about today what happens if we have parallel lines and we get these angles. Whoa. Okay, so our first one is called postulate 15, corresponding angles postulate. Um, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, so here's my two parallel lines, and I put my little arrows here to show that, okay, and I'm cutting a transversal through it. Now, the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So I'm going to give you guys one example of that. Here's one and two. One and two are corresponding angles because it's the top left-hand corner, top left-hand corner. But if these lines are parallel, then we know that angle one is going to be congruent to angle two. All right? And this works for all the corresponding angles. It's kind of cool. So if I put like a three and a four here, they'd be the same. A five and a six, they'd be the same. And a seven and an eight, they'd be the same. Okay? So good stuff. Neat things happen when parallel lines are there. Okay? Um, alternate interior angles, right? Theorem 3.4. If two parallel lines are cut by transversals, so I'm going to go ahead and draw two more parallel lines. I'm trying to mix the drawings up so you see different examples. Okay, arrow, arrow. Okay, there's my transversal. Uh, alternate interior, so I'm going to say three and four. All right, these are alternate interior. They're on the inside. They're across one another. They are going to be congruent as well. So... Angle three would be congruent to angle four. And again, um, corresponding had four pairs. Here we have two, so there's three and four. I could say like these two would be the same as well, all right? Only if I have parallel lines, all right? Good stuff. Um, this is like uh, the odd one out, all right? This is the one that kind of trips up a lot of kids. Consecutive interior angles, if two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So I'm going to go ahead and draw again a different picture. I'm trying to mix it up for you guys. Okay, so these ones are parallel. We show that by doing the arrows. All right. I'm going to call this 5 and 6. Now, 5 and 6 are not alternate interior. They are consecutive interior. Okay, or sometimes we call it same side. They're what we call supplementary. There's a vocab word from the past. Um, so it's going to be angle 5 plus rather the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle six is equal to 180 degrees, all right? So these are not congruent, but they add up to 180, okay? Cool. Um, kind of back to normal then, alternate exterior angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the pairs of alternate exterior are congruent. So let's see here. Um, I'm really trying so hard to draw a different line, but it's kind of all the same. Yeah, they don't look parallel at all. I'm sorry, my drawing is a little bit off. Human error, I know. The alternate exterior would be here, seven and eight. Um, that just means that angle seven would be congruent to angle eight. So for the most part, these are your big four. Um, congruent, corresponding, congruent, alternate interior, congruent, alternate exterior, but this consecutive interior one, that's the one that's different, okay? Finally, we have the perpendicular transversal. Um, this one's kind of like the, uh, well, duh one. If a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines and is perpendicular to the other, um, I like to call this one the football field one. If I have per or parallel lines and I draw a line, a transversal cutting through it that's perpendicular, it has to be perpendicular to all of them, okay? Um, so that means nine degrees, nine degrees, nine degrees. So if you look at a football field, right, you don't have to draw this, but, okay, like all the way down. These are all 90 degrees, all of them, which makes sense, right? I mean, you can see on the sports field. You see this on a lot of sports fields, okay? So very nice. Um, I always think of this stuff, too, which is kind of cool with um, things like miniature golf, right? Okay, and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at a few examples, and we'll from there. So this is kind of nice, given that angle four is 70 degrees. So I know this is 70 degrees. I'm all about labeling pictures. Well, I know, 
okay, that angle one is directly across from it. We've already learned that angles opposite of one another are called vertical. So if this is 70, I know this is going to be 70 degrees. Good stuff. Um, I learned, okay, that this is a linear pair because it forms a line. I can put my pen on here. So it makes a 180 degree angle. So if I do 180 minus 70, I get 110 degrees. Good stuff. I should just circle it too. All right. Well, here's the thing. We can basically pick this up, shift it over, and put it down. Angle 1 and 5 are alternate exterior. Well, we know that they're congruent, but we just learned with our theorem. So if 1 is 70, 5 has got to be 70. 3 and 2 are alternate exterior. Okay, so this must be the same thing as well. So what's kind of neat is that you pick this up. You literally pick it up, move it over, boom, you got it. So if I come over here, angle 1 is 70 degrees. Angle 2 is 110 degrees. Angle 3 is 110 degrees. And angle 5 is 70 degrees. Okay, good stuff. All right. Find the value of x using the given information. Now, each of these is different. So they, so each one's a separate problem. All right, so I wouldn't recommend like drawing the information on this picture. It's kind of a weird, goofy problem. Um, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. Six and three. So here's six, here's three. So if I'm going to first identify what six and three are, they are alternate interior. Okay. And if I flip my notes over to the other side, I can see the alternate interior angles are congruent, which means they're the same. So I know that these have to be equal. So I can make my equation 4x plus 4 equals 92, OK? And I'm going to solve this and uh, like we normally do, minus 4 from both sides. 4x equals 88. I can divide by 4. x equals 22. I'm going to double check real quick what were my directions, find the value of x. Did I do that? I did. High 5, OK? Low 5, you get the idea. That's my lucky number two, by the way. Cool. That's it. Done. All right. Now, six and two. So this is a separate problem. This is separate from A. All right. Six and two over here. Here's six in this corner. Here's two up top. Okay. Corner, 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 corner is corresponding. Okay. Corresponding congruent. Corresponding is congruent. So again, I know that this is going to equal that. 4x minus 10 equals 70. Um, I can add 10 to both sides. 4x equals 80. Divide by 4. x equals 20. Okay. Good stuff. Great. Okay. It's, it's pretty, pretty much you, you, we're using our notes to help us out with this. Okay. 3 and 5. 3 and 5. Okay. They're on the inside. Same side, consecutive, okay? So that means consecutive interior, right? They are not going to be equal, but they're going to be supplementary. This is the tough one, right? So I'm taking this value, 62. I'm adding it with that value, 7x minus 8, and I'm making it equal to 180, okay? Um, combine like terms, 7x, 62 minus 8, all right, it's 54. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 54. 7x equals 126. Okay, divide by 7. x equals 18. Okay, very nice. All right, that again, that's the tricky one, but... Um, well, we've done alternate interior corresponding consecutive interior, 1 and 8. They're kind of my favorite, alternate exterior. So they're, again, same, equal, congruent. Make your equation, 3x minus 9 equals 75. We're going to go ahead and solve this, plus 9, plus 9. 3x equals 84. Divide by 3, um, 28. Okay. So... Setting it up is difficult, but it helps to label what kind of angles you have first. If you're struggling with that, let me know so I can help you. Okay? Wonderful. Last two, then. Um, and these are not crazy. I mean, it's pretty much the same idea. It's just use properties of parallel and solve for x. It's just kind of like more visual. Um, so 10x minus 2 is this angle. 98 is that angle. 
Um, these are going to be alternate interior. So they're again congruent. I can say 10x minus 2 equals 98. We can solve this. Add 2, add 2. 10x equals 100. Divide. x equals 10. Good to go. Um, this one's a tricky one. This is a curveball one. Okay, this one is kind of kind of mean to throw at you because it's really I didn't do it at all on the entire notes. I mean, like I don't know, ooh, what could we possibly do with this? These are not alternate exterior. Okay, these are actually what we call consecutive exterior angles. But I mean, we don't really have a theorem for them, but we can kind of play with it. If this is 103, I know that this has to be 103. Well, if I put them side by side, they form a straight line. Therefore, I can make an equation, 14x plus 7 plus 103 equals 180. And this isn't the only way to do it. It's probably just, I think it's the easiest way. 14x plus 110 equals 180. Subtract 110 from both sides. Okay. <clears throat> Divide by 14. x equals five all right so great job everybody i hope that helps okay if you have any questions please let me know you guys can try out the homework and as always keep up the good work and good luck we're all counting on you